Imagine this, you have a picture to hang on the wall, a nail to hang it on, and a hammer to put the nail in the wall. Would you ever consider going to get a new hammer after each time you hit the nail? Or would you just use the hammer that you already have? No, this isn't a home improvement video, but that short anecdote is exactly what Hungarian concert pianist Gellert Modos told me when I was a very young student. I had faithfully practiced a repeated note section using alternating fingering. It's what my teacher had told me. It was what was printed in the score itself as the best fingering choice. And he told me what? He told me not to do that? He said, if your finger is the hammer, you're not going to go out and grab a new one each time you need to hit the nail, right? So is the takeaway always use the same finger on the same note? Not exactly. There's actually quite a lot of misconception about the use of alternating fingering at the piano. Piano with Johnny, a quite widely known and widely used platform for online piano lessons, dedicates one of the top 10 technique mistakes to this very concept. He calls it the overambitious finger and recommends to not use the same finger twice in a row. But wait, the story I just told you was a concert pianist who said to use the same finger twice or three times or more in a row. And in fact, Chopin said to only alternate fingers if there was no other choice in executing the passage. So who's right? Well, Piano with Johnny is right. And Professor Modos and Chopin are right. And they're all wrong as well because the answer isn't black and white. It's not purely one or the other. If we approach this topic through the lens of the beginner or even intermediate pianist, there's always a tendency at that level to use a single finger on the same pitches. Now, ironically, this is both the best choice and that it's by far the most efficient use of our body. And it's also the worst choice because early in our pianistic development, we don't know how to let go of the tension that we create as we play. So for that reason, we always teach students early on to learn to alternate fingers on the same pitch. That alternation allows us to trigger different parts of our mechanism, help us relax, let go of unnecessary tension between key strikes, and overall continues to encourage us to become better and more efficient pianists. But at a certain point, we should strive to develop enough freedom in our playing that we can once again return to the idea of using a single finger. After all, one finger is a very efficient approach. And if we can let go of all of that excess tension, we have in many cases the best possible solution in using just a single finger. Plus, a little bonus here, there are plenty of occasions throughout the repertoire where we don't have a choice but to use the same finger or set of fingers repeatedly. Let's take a look at one very famous piece of music for a perfect example of both of these approaches to playing repetitions. Furleys. As we enter the C section of the piece, measure 59, the left hand is confronted with 16 measures of repeating 16th note pitches or chords. In most editions, you'll see fingering marked as 3 2 one on that first measure, implying that we should be using an alternating fingering approach to the left hand in this passage. And in fact, when most pianists first encounter this piece in their musical journey at the intermediate level, the best technique to employ is the alternating fingering as marked. But, we have a slight problem. In measures 64, 65, and 66, the left hand needs to switch from playing single pitches to playing what basically amounts to a chord, still in 16th notes, still repeating the same notes for most of each measure. In those three measures, there isn't a choice except to use the same fingers over and over again. Because this passage necessitates learning the freedom in the wrist and fingers to articulate 16ths in both manners, I find that it's the perfect passage to also remind us that we aren't locked in to playing repeated single notes with alternating fingers. We have choices. Still not convinced that Furley's can or even should be played without that alternating fingering in the score? Take it up with Long Long.
So here are some questions to ask yourself. Are you feeling tense as you play a repeated note passage? If you are, try some alternating fingerings. Those could be anything from as simple as 2-1-2-1 two, one, two, one, to 3-2-1 three, two, one, or even 4-3-2-1 There are a handful of other varieties. One that comes to mind is three one two one. On the flip side, do you feel like you're playing as relaxed, but you don't have as much control over each articulation as you'd like? Try using just a single finger through the passage. There are plenty of times where we can also use both techniques. Perhaps a few bars feel better using a single finger, and a few others feel better using an alternating approach. We can mix and match these types of choices, even in the same passage. Now, before we wrap up today, this discussion wouldn't be complete unless we also talk about a few very advanced applications of these techniques. Not all of the time will we be able to interchange the approaches. Learning to play repetitions with a single finger helps to teach the exact technique needed to play repeating chords and octaves at fast tempi. There are many, many pieces that call for this sort of technique, and perhaps one of the most famous is Schubert's Erlkönig, and of course Liszt's transcription of it. Here is a snippet of a brilliant performance by Yuja. <laughs> But there are also many times in the repertoire where repeated notes are simply so fast and so close together that we must play them with the alternating finger approach. Check out Martha Argerich's blazingly fast playing of this Scarlatti Sonata. So today's takeaway, it's really important to learn both playing repetitions with alternating fingers as well as with a single finger. First off, having both as an option allows for so many more choices during practice and performance. And secondly, when you come across a passage where there is no longer an option, it won't be your first time thinking about the opposite approach. All right, that's all for today. Remember to practice smarter, not harder, and I'll see you next time you visit Pianist Academy.